green chemistry, its role in uh, advancing sustainability, and dealing with health issues, and dealing with environmental issues, um, so that you get the benefits of chemistry and chemicals in the world without the adverse consequences. 21 words. It's the defi one sentence definition of green chemistry. Green chemistry is the design of chemical products and processes that reduce or eliminate the use and generation of hazardous substances. So we're teaching a, a course on this, this subject. There are journals devoted to the subject. There are international networks, research networks, in 35 countries around the world. There are presidential awards on this subject. And I could go on and on and on. These 21 words better mean something if you're going to define uh, uh, an area of focus um, like that in one sentence. So green chemistry. So I'm going to just spend a few minutes about this. So first of all, it'll sound like I'm joking. People think I'm joking when I uh, talk about green chemistry. Now there's green everything, green this, green that. But back in 91, uh, it, wasn't, uh, it wasn't that way. And people said, how did they come up with this crazy name, green chemistry, at the time? And they think I'm joking when I say that, you know, green, of course, everybody now thinks of conjuring up images of, of the natural environment. You know, green trees, green leaves, and everything else. And it's synonymous with environmental types of issues. But in the U.S., green is also the color of our money. And so how do you break that old myth that we've talked about, which is that if you're going to have environmental improvement, make things more sustainable, it has to cost more, and it has to be an economic drain. How do you instead meet the economic goals and the environmental goals simultaneously? How do you align those two things so that market drivers become a catalyst for doing things in a sustainable way? And that's one of the things that's at the essence of green chemistry, and quite frankly, one of the reasons why it has such widespread adoption. Um, and we can talk a lot more about that. But the word chemistry in this, chemistry is the design of chemical products and processes. So when we're talking about chemistry, we all know that we're not talking about a department in a university. We're not talking about a particular industry sector narrowly defined. As we've been talking about, we're talking about everything that you can see, touch, and feel at the most fundamental level. How do you understand the molecular basis of, of our uh, products and processes to make them more sustainable? Okay. So, um, products and processes. Mention this. Why? Because really what we're talking about, and what's absolutely key, is the life cycle talked a little bit about the life cycle. We're going to talk a lot about the life cycle in just a, a few minutes. But is it possible to make something that's benign or therapeutic and beneficial, a product that is made in an absolutely egregious manufacturing process? Is that possible? Yeah. Does anybody want to remind me about pharmaceuticals? How much waste per pound of product on average for pharmaceuticals? One ton of waste per pound of uh, product produced on average across the life cycle. Okay? Uh, you'll see different numbers. The different numbers is because you're going to get variability from drug to drug. But the variability is also because <coughs> if you measure across the life cycle from the origin of the feedstock to the end of the product, it could be very different if you say, oh, well, we're measuring from gate to gate when you're only what's happening within our manufacturing facility. So you'll see different numbers, but a ton of, ton of waste per pound of product is a good uh, general, general measure. Hold it. That could be a life-saving drug. Yeah, but you made it in a way that was tremendously polluting. What about the opposite? Can you have a tremendously efficient uh, manufacturing process? but brings about an, uh, a, a, an acutely lethal product? Sure, absolutely. The synthesis of mustard gas, one of the horrible nerve agents of uh, World War I, is one of the most perfectly efficient chemical syntheses 
manufacturing process that you can imagine. It's, you could argue that it's about as close to zero waste as many of our manufacturing processes get. Okay, so you need to look a, across the life cycle. So we're talking about products and processes that reduce or eliminate the use and generation. Okay, so can you reduce waste with green chemistry? Absolutely. Eh? Can you make a process more efficient using green chemistry? Absolutely. Is that where it ends? Absolutely not. Again.